Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to what is the fourth episode of our LYPP employment series. Play the jingle. Now, again, you join me in my car, which I apologize, I will come up with new ideas soon, but you join me in Queens Ferry, where I mean, I have a nice view. I don't know if you can see much. You can probably just see this blue Skoda. But today, I'm going to be chatting to you about how I got to the LYPP. So, I'll quickly mention primary school. Not an awful lot went on there. Uh, I was quite an average student. I was well behaved. I was fairly intelligent, although I was in the top reading group circa 2005. Big up the green group. But I was a pretty normal little boy. Uh, pretty happy, pretty content. In terms of what I wanted to do with my life, because, uh, you know, nobody really knows at that age. But I thought about being a soldier. That's always been something that's been in the back of my mind, because my dad was a soldier for eight years uh, when he was a young man. I also thought about being a teacher, because I quite enjoyed primary school, so I thought, more of this and with money, please, would be great. And apart from that, briefly wanted to be an author or a reporter or something that involved writing, because I quite enjoyed writing in school. But I really didn't know what I wanted to do. These were just ideas that floated about in my head at a young age. So when it came to high school, I didn't really have anything to build on. And apart from going to the Cubs and the Scouts when I was a little boy, I didn't really have any hobbies. So I really didn't know what I was about as a human being, never mind in terms of what I wanted to do with the rest of my life for work. So I kind of, I bumbled my way through school. I didn't do particularly well. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I never really had the enthusiasm and the drive to knuckle down and do well. Um, I'll show you actually my exam results that I got. Some of them are pretty good. I'm proud of them and they're usable for getting into uh, places of work. But as you can see here, my crowning achievement is I got an A in, uh, in higher PE and I think I was the top of my class as well, so uh, <laughs> yeah. Apart from that, I got a B at Higher English, which I was really chuffed with. And I got a C at Maths, which might not sound like an awful lot to anybody else, and it took me two years to get it. But it does mean that I am the only blood relative that I know of who has a Maths qualification. So, results that were all right, but a bit directionless, a bit random. Didn't know what I wanted to do. But one of the things that I did really enjoy growing up was church. Around about that time, and maybe a bit younger actually, my mum, who if you've been to Bridge End Primary School in the last five or six years, you'll know her as Mrs O'Neill, uh, she was the children's worker at St John's Church, which meant she was in charge of all of the stuff that the kids did on a Sunday morning and through the week. And because of that, because of her being in that job, I got to basically be behind the scenes in a lot of holiday clubs and kids events and she also let me help out. She let me run uh, like the sports games that we played. She let me run or help in little groups and sort of be a helping hand when I was too young to go along and she basically couldn't find a babysitter so I got to go along and help. And that was my first taste of youth work or children's work. And just on a side note with that, that would be one big bit of advice that I can give to you from my limited experience in the workplace. Volunteering is a fantastic way to fill out a CV. So if you're like me and you're, you know, your exam results aren't looking great or they're looking okay, um, but you want to beef it out a little bit, definitely find ways that you can volunteer. We're starting our youth volunteering program soon. So look out for that if you're interested. But anywhere you can volunteer is a fantastic way to fill out a CV. And it definitely helped me get into college. It might have been the thing that tipped me over getting into college rather than not, uh, which we'll get onto later. But as I started to get older and continued volunteering with my mum, uh, I got into the YF, which was S4 until S6. And this, for me at least, was when my brain started to work. And it was also at this time that I properly got to know a guy who had a really big influence on my journey of work. And that was a guy called Andy. And Andy was the youth worker and still is the youth worker actually at St John's. A lot of you guys uh, might know Andy if you're a wee bit older because he used to work at the LYPP as well. Um, and Andy was one of the first people I'd met in church 
who I was like, wow, yeah, you're cool. I want to be like you. And he was a youth worker. So essentially, I started to hero worship this guy, right? And I'm going to get pelters for this because I'm still really good mates with Andy and he'll probably see this and rip me rotten for it. But it's true. I started to absolutely idolize the guy and think he was the tops and I wanted to be just like him. So when it came time for me to leave school, on the, on the day I left school, I woke up not knowing I was going to leave. And I went into school and I started signing my forms of picking my subjects for sixth year. But on that year, in Falkirk Council, they changed the way sixth year worked. And they basically made it so that you didn't get free periods anymore. And so I was going to have to take a bunch of subjects that I really didn't care about. So immediately I was like, right, thanks but no thanks. I think I'll leave and try my luck somewhere else. And so I got bundled from classroom to classroom to classroom. And eventually I found myself in the career advisor's office. And his advice to me uh, consisted of asking me what I did in my spare time and then using that to put into a job searching website and find me something that I could do. So this guy put it into his little computer and he was like, right, I think you could go to college and try out this course called a higher national certificate in working with communities. And I was like, sure, Mr. Careers man, that sounds swell. So long story short, I went and I did that and I smashed it. I did really well in terms of my academic performance. Um, I was told by the interviewer that I was the youngest person to ever sit that course, which I believe him on because I walked in on the first day and it was a room full of middle-aged women. And there's nothing wrong with middle-aged women, but as a 16 year old who'd just left school and was losing touch with all of his friends and wasn't sure what he wanted to do with his life, to be sat in a room where you're the same age as everybody's kids is awkward. So it's fair to say that in college, um, as much as I did well academically, the course wasn't what I thought it was going to be, which is a big issue uh, when you're trying to stay motivated. And a lot of people dropped out of the course. We started with about 30 and ended with eight, I think, getting the certificate that I showed you there. Um, so people were dropping out all over the place and there were mental breakdowns rife. Everyone was really struggling. But the one thing that kept me going through it all was my placement. Now a placement is like a voluntary bit of work that you have to do as part of a lot of college courses, uh, which you get signed off on and that's part of your coursework. And so I did it through St. John's Church with Andy and then I also did it with the OIPP. And that is technically the end of my journey of how I got to the OIPP, but of course there's more. Uh, so I started volunteering up at Bridge End when I was, I think I was 17 when I started up at Bridge End, so that was interesting. But I did that placement for about a year with the LIPP and St John, sort of in tandem. And that is what kept me going, because I enjoyed the practical work and I wasn't enjoying college. But in the year after that, I did a thing that's called an internship with St John's Church. It, it's like a low paid, low end startup where you get your foot in the door, you do a bit of training and studying at the same time, and you work alongside people in the workplace to sort of build your way up and decide whether you wanna, wanna pursue this further. And it's a really good opportunity. Now in a practical sense, the St. John's internship was great. And I would encourage anyone who's looking at doing uh, youth work to sort of look at an internship. They're quite common. And it's a good way of um, getting your foot in the door, like I said, and starting to get your head around how it all works and sort of understand the basics of youth work. It was it was a good year in that sense. But it was during this year that I had a bit of a, an epiphany on the last few years of my life. Now I mentioned earlier that guy Andy and how I'd started to basically hero worship this guy and think he was the tops and uh, I just wanted to be exactly like him. And it was during this year of internship where that kind of reared its ugly head and caused me some real issues because I realized that I didn't really want to be a Christian youth worker I just wanted to be Andy Clark because he was a really good role model for me but instead of taking all of his role modelness in a positive way I had turned it into an unhealthy kind of replication project where I just wanted to be exactly like him not learn from him not take the good elements from him not listen to what he was saying and take his advice I just wanted to be him and it really wasn't healthy so uh, during that year of internship, which actually ended mid-COVID, the first lockdown, um, 
I ended up quitting and uh, it was a really tough time because in that moment I was sort of having a watershed realisation of what I didn't want to, want to do with my life. I still don't really know what exactly I want to do with my life. I'm loving life at the OIPP and we'll come on to that. Um, and I'm excited just to get back to normal after all this COVID online stuff. Um, but it was a real realization for me in the first lockdown that I had gone into a workplace because I wanted to be a specific person. But when I realized, oh, I can't be Andy Clark, I've got to be Ben O'Neill. And then I realized, oh wait, I don't really like Ben O'Neill as he is right now. I spiraled into a really poor mental state. And I also then realized that I only wanted to be in the position I was in because I wanted to be someone who I'm not. And I think that if I can say one thing in this video, if you take away one thing from all the waffle that I've talked, it's that be yourself. It's important to come to terms with who you are as a person before you think about what you want to do as a job. But I think um, that's about all I've got to say. This maybe got a little bit more deep and a bit topsy mosh than I was, uh, I was thinking it would get. There was a little bit of how to get a job advice in there, but I'm definitely not the man to go for for that. But if you take anything away from this, please do remember, you can do anything you want. Like, shoot for the moon. You can do it. But understand and really think about, why do I want to do this? Do I want to do this for the right reasons? And if you do, don't be afraid to take a risk, because I failed, and it's fine. I'm better off for failing, because I now understand myself and my role in life better. So go for it, understand why you're going for it, and don't be afraid to mess up and fail. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I think it's only... Who's left to do one of these videos? Oh, maybe I was the last person to do one of these videos. If it is, thank you for watching this series of employment videos. I hope you found them helpful. I hope there's some advice in there that you can take. And I hope you guys have a great week. We will see you around our social medias and hopefully at our Zoom stuff on Friday, one day very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.